Hey there, it's Monday morning. Got a lot to do today, gonna take you guys along. It's pretty early right now. I don't know how well I can vlog this early. I am pretty sleepy, but first things first, I gotta go take care of the animals, and that's what I always do every morning before I even get my kids up and get them ready for school. So we're gonna feed and water the chickens. We got two groups, we still got the baby chicks, which are about five weeks old now, and uh, the main flock, so we're gonna take care of that first. One thing I really try to, oh hello. One thing I really try to do is to limit my chore time in the morning. Um, we're all limited in the morning and you know, just try to make things more efficient. So anything you can do to make things more efficient is great. I really minimize my number of flocks. I have my main flock here and then the babies, which you guys saw, they're five weeks old. And um, yeah, lady, I'm trying to make a video here. Man, they love being on camera. Um, and so another thing I did do is have a, an automatic water, and that's also really helpful. Let me show you that. So you've probably seen me talk about other videos that I have tried a lot of different waters, and this is my current one that I'm trying out. And this one's made by Kane. I got this from Premier One. I bought this, and so far I've been pretty happy with it. I, you know, there's a couple of things, but it's pretty close for me. Uh, I really do like the automatic waterer because I don't have to lug large uh, buckets and things of water around the farm. And as the flock size is increasing, it just becomes more and more challenging. Uh, this way I really don't have to worry about the water. Of course, it'll have to be something different in the winter time um, as it does uh, go below freezing here. Uh, so th that'll be a, um, addressed at that point. But, you know, for the amount of time that I have to do of running a hose over, I save way more than that every morning. So, you know, if they're in one paddock for a week, let's say, I mean, that's one setup for the water. And all I do is pick it up, dump it out, and uh, it fills up automatically. So it's also great, um, you know, because we have because we have the goose in here, uh, we can't be doing nipple waters and stuff like that. He's gonna be able to dip his beak in there and uh, and wash it out and stuff. So this has just been a great little water so far. And uh, I don't know, I'll keep you guys posted about it, see how it's working down the line. So we've got the chickens all sorted out. So it usually takes about 10 or 15 minutes. I gotta get my kids up and get them ready for school. Got some uh, online stuff to do and then I'm gonna go plant some microgreens. So let's get on that. Got all that stuff done this morning, computer stuff, got the kids off to school. Now let's plant some microgreens. All right, got my 12 flats of peas done. If you haven't before, check out this video up here all about microgreens. Um, it's one of my first few videos, but there's a ton of good information there if you're interested in how I'm doing this. I, I really like doing um, this, bench here uh, will hold six trays really comfortably and I stack them in stacks of three so it works out perfectly. So uh, let's do the sunflowers. So got those peas and sunflower all planted and I am gonna be doing broccoli and radish and I don't need to show you guys that, you, you guys get the point here. And those are my main microgreens I'm growing right now. I'm really trying to increase my, my production a little bit because I have a new account and I'm also looking to get a couple more restaurant accounts. And so by wanting to increase my production, I need to increase my capacity with my grow space. And right now I have two growing racks and they hold 32 trays. And what I'm gonna be doing is adding another shelf to each one and also another rack and I have to get a bunch of lights and so that would really increase my capacity quite a bit. And that's not just for microgreens because I do all of my starts for my transplants in here too and 
I've been having a lot of issues lately where it's kind of a bottleneck and you know I kind of feel like handcuffed a little bit because I you know I have to decide between starting trays for transplants or planting microgreens and, and you don't want to be in that situation you really want to have the capacity that you need uh, for the demands for your customers and, and for the production that you need so that's something that I'm going to be doing moving forwards and I'll keep you guys updated on all that so the rest of the day here I'm going to get those other trays planted and then I'll see how much time I've left and prioritize the other things I have to do today it's always a challenge to get done everything you want to get done Got you guys now in the high tunnel. And if you guys remember that this is full of tomatoes the first half of the summer and the last bit of time we've been growing eggplants in here. This is my first time growing eggplants, so I'm pretty excited. And we're starting to get a little bit of production over here. I see some, I'm probably gonna have to harvest those. And I have to admit, I've been neglecting them a little bit and everything's been doing okay, but I gotta get these guys trellised at least a little bit. So I'm gonna use these four foot posts to uh, do a floor to weave in here. That's what I'm gonna work on right now, just to try to stand them up a little bit. Um, Hopefully they'll be a little bit happier if they're st they're stood up. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try that. Uh, I, I usually like the five or six or seven foot posts, but I was concerned about the height here on the sides being able to pound them in. So I am gonna just use these four footers, and hopefully that'll be enough. And I'll space them out, and we got four rows in here. So let me get on that, and then uh, and then we'll take a look and see what it looks like, and maybe we can find some eggplants to show you. Got them all strung up, but let's take a look at some of the fruit that's coming in right now. Yeah, pretty excited about this. As I said, first time growing eggplants, I did four varieties as a trial. Something I like to do when I do a, a new crop is try out a bunch of varieties, see what works well in my context here. So we have um, Beatrice, Orient Express, Nadia, and Nubia. And these are all from Johnny's. And as I read in the description, Orient Express would be the first ones out and definitely is true. Those are the ones that you just saw. Nice, long, skinny, purple ones. And we'll see how they all do. And you know, hopefully we'll be able to Help us make decisions about different varieties moving forwards, but again, I have been sort of neglecting these. I haven't even weeded in here at all, and I was in here actually looking for weeds, and it was actually kind of hard to find them, but the only weeds I really found were tomatoes, which were what was in here before. And yeah, we'll see what happens with this, uh, but I'm happy to finally be getting some crops out of here. Hopefully I can get a little bit of a harvest this week, and we'll see what happens. I also want to give you a little bit of an update on the Chick Chariot, and everything's been going great so far. Uh, we, they've been in here, I don't know, maybe almost a week or so, and when I transferred them over, all I did was I moved the Chick Chariot in uh, sometime midday after they were done laying, and then I moved the Shaw out, closed up the fence, and they all went in there that night and slept in there. It just took them a couple days to get used to the new nest box, and I found a lot of stray eggs for a few days. But they're all laying in there now, besides maybe <clears throat> one or two eggs that I find laying around. Uh, they've been a little bit stressed over that transition, so their egg production went down a little bit. But I think we're back pretty much on board. Everyone's been pretty happy, and they get pretty comfortable there. There's definitely a ton of room in there, and you know, plenty of room for more chickens. And it's, I think it's a little bit taller inside than the chick shaw, so Larry can actually stand up and, and fit under there, which I think is awesome, rather than him having to like crouch around and stuff. But let's go get some eggs. Well, we'll see how this goes with the filming. You remember last time I brought the camera in here with the chickens all over the place. So uh, yeah, let's let's check this out. So let's lift this up, lift this down. Let me show you what's going on in here. Eggs are looking great in there, nice and clean. Except these ladies always try to jump up in here when I'm trying to get eggs. Get out of here, lady. One stray dirty egg, not bad. Who was it? Who doesn't lay in the nest box? Is it you? Is it you? Just kidding. Had to get away from the hens. If I'm in there, man, they're making too much noise. So at least you can you can still see them, right? Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, so one thing I want to talk about a little bit is the pasture management they got going on here. And I don't know, some of you guys are probably wondering what's going on because I'm totally overgrazing. And I'm doing that on purpose. And the reason is, I've mentioned this before, that this 
all this area got cleared out from trees this spring and basically we had they had big machines in here and they dug up all the stumps they're really big trees so everything just got destroyed and so i'm just rebuilding the soil uh as i rotate the birds around and so what i'm doing is i'm growing grasses and what, what i've been growing this summer is millet which goes really well in the heat here in north carolina so i've been using that as sort of a cover crop forage grass kind of thing and i plant it it grows up i, I move the chickens and let them overgraze it they eat what they can try to get some biomass in here, try to get some fertility from the chicken manure, and then I rotate them. And so I'll do that a bunch until we sort of start building our soil again, and then I can maybe consider some perennials, but we'll see. Uh, I did really well with planting um, cereal rye in the winter time last year, did really well, and germinated and grew in the winter, so probably be some more of that here. And yeah, you can see, you can see Larry over here eating the millet. He's enjoying it. Yeah, you are. Got some other cool stuff coming up soon, and I am gonna go film some more stuff with Jeff Bender, so if you guys were curious about that, yes, I'm going this week to go do some more filming. I'm not sure if it's gonna be like a multi-part thing or one longer thing. We'll sort of see how it goes. Jeff and I got some ideas, and it's gonna be fun. And other than that, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.